Hey folks, my name is Provis, and welcome to more Millennia, the new 4X strategy game that takes you through 10,000 years of Earth history, except for when it doesn't and things branch off as we saw in the last video. Such as what we're seeing in our current campaign, where we just entered into the Age of Discovery, which I believe is Age 5 in the game? Could be wrong on that, but I am pretty sure. So we're picking up right where we left off from last time, though of course I do want to say this video is still sponsored by Paradox Interactive, a very big thank you to them for that. And if if you guys want to learn more, the game is coming out in just a couple days on March 26th, so click on that link in the description down below. Now, as far as the current state of our empire, I'd say things are looking pretty good. We have a fair amount of territory that has been claimed, lots of little vassal cities that are sitting at maximum prosperity, and as a result, we're getting a pretty good income out of them. And we're just now getting our feet under us when it comes to science. I'm beating all the other AIs. If we can continue building on this, we're going to be in a really good spot. And I've done that deliberately because whoever sets the trend in research is generally going to dominate the game, but I've done so by neglecting a lot of other things. Like our arts XP, I am very well aware we have not done much with our theologian's national spirit. I do plan on changing that. And the fastest way that I can think to turn that around is actually to build things like monasteries. Because these are going to cost me nothing to build except for some building points as long as they're out in some outposts. It doesn't take any people to run them. And it does get me an extra art XP as well as some religion in whatever city this is linked to. So might be that the best thing is to do is just spawn some pioneers and then send them to places with lots of hills like over here with three more and just get a whole bunch of cheap monasteries. That would solve the problem pretty quick. So place this here, then get a monastery, get a monastery, and get a monastery. Boom, just like that, we should have three more XP that is coming in, so we're now producing seven per turn. And all that happened within one quick turn, so we should have done that a lot sooner. Now, we also discovered a few lost cities of gold thanks to the Age of Discovery. This is something you normally would not be able to see. And with our new Conquistador Explorer units, we can go on some expeditions, and it looks like this is a multi-stage process. There is a final expedition success chance, lose and you're gonna cry, so we probably want to make a few investments to boost up our final success chance. I think that is fine. We've also got the Caves of Chiquibil up over this direction. Not sure what that's gonna lead to. In theory, once we finish the expedition, these are gonna become workable tiles with some sort of really nice improvement. The Aztecs won an alliance. No, I'm pretty sure they're already allied to two different people, actually. Like the uh, Persians and, was it the Greeks? Something like that. So they got lots of friends, and I frankly don't feel like getting called into stupid people's wars. Uh, now we have to take a risk. 70% chance of success and boosting up our chances of winning that. Good, we can have more than one conquistador burning down the expedition a little bit faster. So if you have a lot of conquistadors around, these are a pretty quick process. And back in our capital city, we could build the Grand Theater to get two more art XP, which is nice. Or we could get some more sanitation and stuff, but I think we want to continue building out some throne rooms. More government XP, please. The more of that we have, the better under every possible circumstance. Let's finish with El Dorado. 100% chance here. Get some money, create the City of Gold. All right, what does that do for us? It gets us chalices, 20 wealth. Be honest, I was kind of hoping for something a bit more exciting than just a bit of money. Money's not the hardest thing to come by, but all right, I'm going to use my XP to just go ahead and claim this territory. Guarantee that we do not miss out on it. And we have an exciting new innovation. What is this going to do for me? Monasteries give knowledge? <gasps> yes, please. Okay, I've got like six or seven of those things. I'm about to get more of them. Oh, ho, ho, every monastery is like having a library. Yep, okay, that's pretty darn good. I like monasteries now. These are great. Funny, by the way, I can build a logging camp here. It gets rid of the City of Gold, at least visually, though the chalices are still here. So this is a really good tile, am I right? Weird. I don't see the option to work the tile, so I'm not sure where to find the extra gold and how to get it. That feels bizarre. Well, good thing I don't need the money. I'll probably figure it out later. And now we can finish our other expedition for Shibalba. Isn't this, um... Something like, something from like Mayan folklore, I think it is, like to the other world, the other underland kind of a thing. I have no idea how that works. Anyway, we get 100 Warfare XP. Wow, that's a lot. All right, we are capped out, which means we can now spend all of our War XP to get some social fabric tenacity. 
It's um, it's a good use of your XP if you are grossly overproducing something. At least you still get some value, but obviously 300 is a lot. Still, that reduces the upkeep cost of all my units by 8%. So that's, that's an all-K okay thing to have. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's rush our culture. And then what do we want to do? Get some more towns? We haven't hosted any Olympic Games in a while. I feel like we get a lot of value if we did that. Sure, let's host an Olympic Games and get 65 knowledge and 750 wealth out of the arrangement. Yeah. So what does working Shibalba over here do? Five Warfare XP per turn? Nice. What are these things over here, by the way? There's like some sort of weird icebergs underwater in these deep water tiles? What is this? An underwater anomaly worth investigating. Move any unit here to investigate. Grant a reward. Really? Is this also part of the Age of Discovery, or has this always been a thing and I just didn't know about it? Huh. I can't go on to deep water right now. We, we do not have the tech for that at all. We would need to get open sailing to pull that off. And the printing press is done. Okay, so now we can get a few more improvement tiles that let me get more logs into more paper so we can get even more books. I like that arrangement. I think the next thing we had talked about was moving on to Baroque, which would not be bad. That said, is there anything back here I really need to get? Because I feel like there's a few. Like, getting organized religion wouldn't be bad. We have not been messing with our religion, like, at all. And as our population grows, getting things at these temples would be good. It's not only going to give us culture, it also gives us knowledge. So that's not bad. Professional army for larger army, sure. Compass, um, guilds, get the arts XP from gold, yeah. Spirituality, we never even got shipbuilding, so that's part of the problem as to why I can't get into, um the water at all. This would take no turns to do. We could also pick up horses real quick and this would give me an influence boost and try to grab some extra tiles. I might just pop back for a moment. I think I'm in a dominant position from a research perspective, so we can afford to pick up a few techs that are currently holding me back. All right, I'm gonna pick up open sailing. I, I know I didn't wanna do this, but six turns isn't that bad. And I really wanna find out what those anomalies are. They could be kinda cool. It could also be a massive waste of my time, but how else are we gonna find out? Once again, I am gonna rush some culture. Um, there's a couple things I wanna do. I think I'm gonna annex Delhi as my next city. And if that's the case, I might turn this into a big mining town because there are so many hills around here. So placing a town right here, for example, preemptively, means we can place on a mining town and get, I think, an extra like eight or so production in the city just by placing down mines around here, which is the only thing I can place around here anyway. What I'll have to do for Delhi, though, since it has almost no food, is chop down a lot of these jungles. And the only way that's gonna work is if I have researched technical engineering to allow me to chop down some of these forests and turn them into grassland tiles. So, annexing Delhi right now is a great way to make the city starve. We don't want to do that quite yet. We can afford to upgrade our theologians, by the way, and I feel like we should. Large Temple on turn start gives art XP. We haven't built any of these yet, and until I get organized religion, it does nothing. So let's go ahead and get some extra money from all monasteries. That should be a lot of extra cash. And then under Feudal Monarchy, I think it might be worth going for Suzerainty. We can get extra prosperity. I think that's an extra 50% prosperity on all vassals, which means more income from all of my non-direct controlled cities. That's a good deal, I think. And then it looks like the Aztecs are not bothering with the lost city over here for some reason. I, I really don't know why, but they're not. The Persians might be, though. I guess I don't know if it's worth farming this out or not. We're gonna try to grab the lost city. I don't really know what they're doing. Actually, I don't even know why I'm doing this at all. If I can't work the lost city, why am I exploring it? Who knows? We got a caravel in our lake. I can't do anything with this. Go ahead and demolish it. What? We just built this beautiful ship. Yes, and it's costing me money. Delete it. Okay, so with open sailing done, now I'm going to pop back over to... Oh, gosh. Baroker. I want both of these is the thing. I'm going to take Baroque for now. Um, but depending on how things are looking with my neighbors, I might actually stay in this age and work on both of those things. What does Trade Company do, by the way? More import slots. Foreign and domestic, as well as production. We haven't really looked at importing much in this game. I probably should do that. Let me build this university first and I'll show you. So with Byzantium, right now we only have one foreign input. And it actually does not need to be this at all. But if we click on this, there's a lot of different things you can import. Mostly from your neighbors if you are on good terms with them. If they're hostile to you, they won't trade any of their goods. But if they're producing it, you could in theory import it. So for example, there's this right here. This is an offering. It's worth two arts XP, and it only costs four of my town's gold income. 
So if I swap away from this garbage coffee and just go ahead and get some offerings, just like that, now I'm getting a bit of extra stuff. If there is no one to trade with, never fear, the import slot's always useful. You can go for the import goods here, which costs eight, and boosts up your culture. So no matter what, as long as you're making a lot of money, trade slots are just extra power of some sort. And Persia's now hostile to me. <sighs> That's going to get annoying, because I know that their scouts are running around in groups, and they're probably going to try to gang up on me, but I'm trying to discover as much of this dang continent as I can. Uh, the whole thing is one giant continent. It's, we're on a Pangea map, in case you forgot. For diplomacy, I have nothing to do with this. Let's go ahead and boost up our tolerance a little bit more. And for feudal monarchy, I think that the next thing I want to do is go for reformed monarchy, just so I'll be able to do a peaceful revolution when the time comes for a new government reform. And anything else here is kind of optional. I don't know if I need the extra population. My city shouldn't be able to support it. Uh, the extra growth and stuff and wealth and improvement points is nice from terrain. But I don't know if they need it. They're getting a lot of extra improvement points as is. And the population growth doesn't help when they're already capped out. Prosperity, I don't need the help with. So I feel like this is the best thing to go for. Then we focus on maybe getting some extra settlers. Maybe just grab Shibaloba. Make sure that this is for me and no one else. We're getting a lot of culture, by the way. Like, I am rushing down this culture. So good. Oh, we have a chaos event about to fire, though. We could do some propaganda. Try to force it back down. Reduce it by 10 per turn so it's in the negative. That's an option. Um, alternatively, how much is a Eureka worth? 130 knowledge now? That's pretty good. That's about half the cost of Baroque. So we could almost just finish it outright, guaranteeing that I'm still ahead of everyone else. I can handle the next Chaos event. We got lots of cash. I don't need any more towns right now. I think we just go ahead and take the Eureka, and then we'll finish Baroque, and then I can go to other things that I know I need. Yeah, case in point. Vassals would rebel. That would be a huge problem. Good thing I got 750 gold sitting around. By the way, I do not want the Japanese claiming this territory, because this is another ideal spot for a mining town with three mines nearby. So we're just going to go ahead and grab that, and I'll place down another town over here later. So, technical engineering, you're my next one right here. The reason I'm doing that is exclusively so I can annex Delhi and make this good. This will be a huge production town. So, what does the Baroque musician do? Really? I can build this in all of my cities. It's worth some art XP and a wild card for social fabric. That is the equivalence, just FYI, of gaining 300 XP in a category of my choice. Wow. I mean, hey, I like Baroque music as much as the next guy, okay? But, like, dang, that's a little overpowered. Let's upgrade our monarchy. That gets me that extra innovation, so we'll start burning through one of these pretty soon. Get some more benefits. And now that we have technical engineering, I, I don't see any reason not to just go ahead and move on to the Age of Enlightenment before anyone else. And given that no one else has made progress on this, this to me just secures that, yeah, I'm in the dominant position. We've gone from like 23 science up to 42 in this video so far, and it's not even been very long, only like 20 some turns. Easy. Gonna host another Olympic Games, only 52 knowledge this time, but that is fine. Vassal autonomy is our next innovation. Extra expansion and population growth per turn for all vassal cities. Well, that's pretty good. Theologians, we can convert all religious population. Uh, in one of our regions to a city on demand, or nationally we can have extra culture from religious populations. Right now I'm making 39.9. Let's boost that up, and we can actually already finish up with Legacy, since I have a lot of people who are currently on our religion. Uh, 136, in fact. Wow. All right, so that's just some free social fabric as well as some extra art XP, so that's good. And I guess we can go ahead and go for a boost to the Cult of Provis here in the capital city, though I do want to get these large temples unlocked. So that's solid, and we bumped up to 48.8, so that was almost worth nine extra culture just from that one move. Nice. And it appears we are ready to move on. All of a sudden, I'm feeling my brain expanding. We are entering into that age of enlightenment, so what happens now? A whole new mechanic called education. This is a need for your people. Build up some public libraries, some public schools, and so on. You'll be able to start getting yourself some of that education need. These are tile improvements. Also, we'll be able to start getting new specialists in order to improve our tiles instead of the regular building points. Uh, secularism grows, so founding new religions is not going to be a thing. It's also slower to convert people. That's a small problem. And we need four techs in order to advance into the next age, not three. 
That's all well and good, but let's be honest, the most exciting thing is what are we going to do with our new domain? And since we are the first in the age, we have our pick. What do we want? Great masters? I don't feel like I need another art. I could go for colonialism? I'm getting a lot of XP in that direction. That said, I think if this were a continents map, this would make sense, but it's not. Inventors is kind of fun in that you can create a lot of innovation, plus like some, I don't know, kind of like Tesla style, um, Tesla style power generation, voltaic piles and stuff. Nice, but not sure this is what I need. What does a laboratory do here? Work, get inventions, more knowledge, but increases your demand for education. So here's the thing, every time you're going to create some of these new things like educated banks or universities and stuff, the knowledge demand is going to go up. You have to invest in grassroots education in order to get the advanced education. So having this is nice, but it means we're going to need a lot of public schools. Whereas if I went for scholars, books would get me education. So we're actually better at meeting our need. And then from meeting that need, we can turn that into more science. Not to mention, we're going to be able to get things like great libraries for every allied and open nor borders nation. We get some knowledge. Boost it to get XP across the board? Uh-huh. Gain a building with education that produces books will get even more education. Knowledge from Eurekas, translators, foreign manuscripts. Oh yeah, if we want to get knowledge, this is the way to go. I feel like we want to go down scholars. Let's do scholars. Gonna get the Great Library unlocked, and then what else do you want? The Scholarly Society, I'm gonna go for probably the Paradigm Shift for the knowledge from Eurekas in case I do that. And we need to get some Exploration XP up and are running now, don't we? Oh yeah, and I also completely forgot that I wanted to annex Delhi. Haha, <laughs> whoops, okay, integrates, done, thank you. All right, you're not quite starving, I'm surprised actually, but you will be. Uh, let's go to our engineering over here and start clear cutting some of these stupid rainforests. Blech, disgusting. Well, actually now I feel bad about it because I've already built a bunch of logging camps over here. But we're not gonna be hurting for um, production. That's not gonna be our issue. So let's go ahead and clear cut. Place down a plowed farm. We could place down a mill. Boom, all right, so that at least helps a bit. We kinda need some housing over here too, which sucks, but all right, get that there. Now, as far as new technologies, there's a lot of options here. Let's see, Reason would get me the Academy of Science. You can see this would demand more education, but would produce an absolute ton of specialists. So that's a thing. Um, this gets me knowledge, again, demands more education. This is why finding something that would let me get more education seemed like such a good idea to me. Uh, standing army, we can increase our maximum size of our armies, get some really good units. If I wanna go conquering, that's not bad. Society, more shopping centers and stuff. Culture, more import slots. Public libraries, there we go. Demands for education, but we get a lot of extra knowledge that away. Coffee house? Uh, yeah, convert to your coffees into something useful. My God, two knowledge? Are you kidding me? That's great. Public sphere would get me more police upgrades, more towns, as well as more flour into bread. Colonies? I don't think I care about this. Government? Influence. Expand our borders rapidly. You know, we have sucked at expanding our borders, if I'm honest. It's not been very good. Central Bank even would require some education. That's interesting. Convert steel ingots and stuff into tools or weapons and so on. Add merchants, yeah, blah, blah, blah. All right, I feel like society and government makes sense. Maybe public sphere or standing army or reason. Let's start with society. We live in a society. Now, here's the really cool stuff. Let's take a look at the new branching paths. Oh, I'm so close to being able to do the Age of Harmony! Uh, we need to be able to spread our religion and 1% off. Alright, if you can do that, we can get into a new Golden Age. However, if we have people uneducated when they need it, we'll enter into an un Age of Ignorance Crisis Age. That would suck. Age of Aether. Recon Balloons. Steampunk? I like the idea of that. And this eventually could lead into the Age of Revolution as well. Well, I feel like we could do the Age of Aether for sure. But if I can get that Age of Harmony, I'm very curious what this will do. How do I spread my religion more, though? This is the real question. I mean, Kyoto's got at least a few people converted already. Um, I feel like the Mayans are heathens that need to be converted. We should be able to do that, right? Isn't there a thing here with arts? Um, yeah, spread religion. If I were to move my guys down here, could we grant you a religion, and if you adopt it, can you then spread it everywhere, and then we can enter into a new Age of Harmony? Is that an option for us, my friendo? 
I mean, worse come to worse, there are some other options, right? We go back to war against the Aztecs. And then I go for Promote Miracles. Convert all religious population in one of your regions into your religion. So all I'd have to do is conquer, like, this city right here, which I'm not going to pretend that I know how to say. And then just click the button and then boom. I mean, that we'll lose, like, half the pops. But even so, I don't need much. Like, we're, we're really close being able to go... Oh, well, it's gone down a little bit. We're really close being able to get that Age of Harmony, though. Couple of conquests, spend a lot of art, boom, problem solved. Oh, I completely forgot. I got, um, deep water access. We should be going over here and getting into the water and trying to discover what the heck is going on in these anomalies. So we get over here, we find a kelp colony. Oh, okay, it's not worth a lot. Some improvement points, a little bit of wealth. I mean, I don't really need money. Um, okay, grab these, clear them out. Oh, there we go. Okay, smart XP and stuff. That, yeah, that's more useful. So, can I force some conversions now? Spread religion? Boom. Did that do anything at all? Uh, looks like I got one population to convert. Just, that's it? Just one? Well, maybe we can do it again on a larger city. It's getting more expensive the more we do this, so I mean, like, I don't know how long that's gonna last. Can you please show me not the stupid cows? I wanna see how much my people are converted. There we go, five of the population. Okay, so it's 20% of the city's population. The larger the city, the more value you get. Which means we are not yet enough, have enough for Age of Harmony. I think this hasn't updated. I think we got enough people for the Age of Harmony now. Yeah, there we go. Now we're at 30.86%. That's still not as good as I expected, to be honest. Nowhere near as good as I expected. Well, it's fine. I'll just, uh, oh, it keeps getting more expensive. I can do this almost every couple of turns, though. We'll just keep doing this until the population's high enough that they start spreading the pressure to all of their cities, and then it becomes easy to maintain. I gotta say, I love, by the way, that we did get all those extra improvements and prosperity for my vassals. I'm watching them actively develop so many tiles that they couldn't do before, and it's really great. Like, Texcoco has mostly repaired from the war, Tours is growing, Malmo is doing its job, look at all this stuff. When I annex these cities, if I annex these cities, like, they're gonna have a whole lot of value to them. I'm starting to see the value, by the way, of this whole exploring the sea thing. It's actually, it didn't seem like much of a benefit, but... Now that we're starting to get experience and stuff as we go, this actually is not half bad for almost no other investment on my end. And we've now converted, I assume, the capital city of the Aztecs to the Cult of Promise. So now, it's gonna start spreading its religion to everything nearby, I hope. That society research, perfect. Um, do I feel like I need to go back to anything? Yeah, I never got organized religion and I still think that's worth doing. We're gonna pick that up because these temples are worth quite a lot to me, and we're gonna be able to make them worth more thanks to the Divine Inspiration. That's more art XP, which means even more conversions if needed. Another innovation, Philosophical Essays. Bonus government XP from all books. Oh my god. <laughs> books are really good all of a sudden. Who would have thunk? Organized religion is taken care of. Is it worth dumping back to anything else? I still don't even have basic things like fine wine and stuff. I wouldn't mind getting professional army just so I can get larger stacks. That'll only take one turn. Then we pump back over here, I think. Continue working on stuff like government. Other people are already in this age. I've seen people with muskets, like the Aztecs, so I know they're at that point as well. Let's go to exploration. Um, a domain power that generates knowledge. Cool. Um, a way of spending exploration XP to just get stuff. That's great. We'll come back to this because I'm still using all my exploration XP. So we're going to instead boost up the Great Library and make sure that gets built. An alliance with Japan. Hmm. <sighs> I wish I had ability to just kind of review my options before I accept or reject. I'm going to reject. Japan has been going to war against Greece very frequently. And if I'm honest, I'm pretty sure Greece is a lot stronger than they are. Yeah, they got 23,000 power, sorry, 2300, and Japan has 1800. Yeah, so no wonder Japan wants an alliance. They do tend to want alliances with anyone that is stronger than them. But they obviously do not if you are even slightly on par. So yeah, this ain't gonna work. I just think we're gonna get called into wars that we don't want, like, all the time if we do that. It'd be actually more advantageous for me to just go ahead and eat Japan. Persia wants an alliance as well. I think everyone's starting to see me as being really strong. Yeah, I'm pretty strong compared to most of them. Oh, gosh. How do I do this? So, I don't really want to ally Persia because there's a good chance I attack the Aztecs in the future. I don't want to ally Japan because there's a good chance I uh, attack them in the future. How does Greece feel about me? I know they're stronger than I am. But maybe, just maybe, I can convince them we should have open borders and eventually do something. I don't even have an envoy with these guys now that I think about it. 
We should probably fix that. We should get ourselves some envoys. You know what's so weird about this game, though? Compared to games that I've played in this genre, right, other 4X games, usually by now I'm feeling really tempted to go on the aggressive, right? Start conquering as many people as possible. Yet in this particular game, in Millennia, I feel like I'm rewarded more for trying to be as peaceful as I really can get away with. Like, what exactly is the advantage of me just going on a mass killing spree here? All I do is introduce chaos. And I won't even be able to control all the cities directly anyway. So maybe it's just a lot smarter to sort of just sit back and build really tall and become a very advanced nation. Anyway, government is now researched. We have to get four techs here, right? Um, I don't think mercantilism's it for me. Public sphere's okay, but I really don't need more towns. We're kind of filling up, to be honest. Bakery won't do me good. Colonies won't do me good. I think we're gonna go for standing army so I can fit even more troops and get better uh, folks. By the way, up to 36% of the world has been converted to my religion, so the Cult of Provis has a full uh, one-third, a little bit more than one-third of the planet worshipping me. That is good. That's how it should be. Gonna integrate another city over here, by the way. Malmo. It's a good city. It's well-developed. There's a lot of good stuff to enjoy here. The only problem with the city is it's not doing any sort of advanced production. That's the only downside. So if we're gonna do things like that, let's just go ahead and start getting, I don't know, some paper and stuff. Get some books. Actually, you know something I really need? Freaking engineering XP. I never have enough engineering XP. We need so much of this stuff to keep chopping down all these trees and expand our towns and so on. Oh, Jesus, I found Barbarian Island. Okay, no wonder they've been spawning so many dang boats around here. Oh, frickin' heck, this explorer is probably dead. We could hit the undo button a few times, and that's actually one weird thing about Millennia. I say weird, it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's more just like... Hey, if you realize that was a horrible blunder, um, you don't want to salvage things, go ahead and just run away. Don't, don't do that in the future. Yeah, that's an option. It actually can be kind of cheaty, right? Because when you first start the game, what you do is you just take your warriors, your scouts, go in one direction, undo, go in another, etc. And just do that until you figure out if there's any nearby goody huts. And then you can commit to your decision. Kind of silly, but I have to admit that undo button has saved my life on a few occasions. So, while I agree that it's weird, I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily. But I say that purely out of self-interest as well. Another innovation. School books. Books get even more education. Oh my gosh. Japan, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not getting pulled in against Greece. It ain't happening. The next time they ask me to kill you, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, books are really good now. Um, between our scholars and everything else, we get so much education, I'm not sure I'm ever gonna need to take advantage of the public school tile improvement. Which is great, because honestly, I'm running out of tiles to improve. So, the more of those I'm able to preserve for other purposes, I say, the better. Hey, how did Tex Coco become more pagan? How did this happen? Ah, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're not allowed to do that to me, my Age of Harmony. Absolutely frickin lutely not. Uh, where's my option to demand that my entire area become... Where's this thing? Arts, culture, power, promote miracles. Oh, it's a culture power. Well, darn it. All right, hang on. Six turns. Uh, that's going to mess up my research and the timing of this a little bit, but I do want to make Texcoco my religion. And somehow the Aztecs become more pagan as well. They're reverting back to their old ways. Come on, what are you telling me? You're telling me that the cult of Provis isn't very, uh, very compelling or something? I don't see why. Just adopt my religion, you jerk. Okay, choose technology. Do you want to go directly for the Age of Harmony? I think the answer is yes. Don't really see any downside to starting that now. I wish there was an auto explore option for some of these explorers here. There's really not much more that I want to do with them. They kind of have run their course. I'm capped out on government XP because we make 37 per turn. Jesus. Um, we're probably about to have a new government type. So I want to hold on to a chunk of this. But we could consider annexing another city for myself. If we did that, what would I take, though? Probably Trevorum and start building out some towns down this direction and just claim the rainforest. That's kind of the big gap right now in all my territory, and y'all know how I feel about border gore. Wow, 190? All right, steep, but I'll take it. We'll make that back pretty quick. I built a public library. I did? I forgot about that. I get specialists. Uh, okay. What do I do with specialists? Well, it looks like there are some special ones up here. There we go, the coffee house. It's the only thing I know how to make that special. 
But converting the tea and coffee into analytics. Oh man, that caffeine, that'll go a long way. I want that. And actually, forget the whole promoting miracles thing. I mean, that's kind of fun, but it's unnecessary. What I need are more towns out this direction. And then we'll go ahead and expand this, and this will become a lumber town, and blah, blah, blah. Just go ahead and start claiming all these dang borders. The game keeps trying to tell me, Hey, please, make sure you spend those points! And I'm all like, spend the points on freaking what? There's not much to spend the points on, except for a few random hills and stuff here and there. Well, I take that back. There's actually a ton of trees we could chop down. Gosh, I really wish I could. I'd love nothing better than to get rid of all these dang trees. But 50 engineering XP each? Like, dude, that ain't cheap. Zulum the Aztecs are at war. Gosh dang, these these AIs just love murdering each other, like non-stop. Zulu's got a 30 population capital, oh my god. But yeah, no, they're just attacking each other all the time. And I don't really know what the Zulu are doing here, because, like, I know that the Aztecs aren't exactly strong at all. But, like, you've been getting attacked on all sides a lot, and you're not exactly strong either. So, the Zulu are on the verge of death to Persia. Greece is going around killing people. The only reason I'm having a good game here is because I kind of uh, slapped the Aztecs in the face and asserted my dominance kind of early on there, and we were pretty strong, we held them off. We kept Japan off of our back until eventually we surpassed them, and now I'm surrounded by two neighbors who are like, we really don't want to fight, and everyone else on the other side are like, yes, we want to fight! So, like, I got myself into a really nice position, and I did that by not ignoring my military at the beginning of the game. Pretty well capped out here on Scholars. What do the translators do again? It's an improvements. Convert three foreign manuscripts into books. I don't even know how you get manuscripts. What exactly is that? Like, I see the value, don't get me wrong. Three foreign manuscripts into three books is a tremendous trade for me, but I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with it. Let's just go ahead and get this. This is our next thing, and if I wanted to just uh, get scientific progress for an extra... 50 knowledge, we can. That's not nearly as much knowledge as I would have liked. And I believe that is the sign we were about to move into another age, because all my cities just changed their appearance. I didn't even notice that before. Actually, are those asphalt roads? 1692? That's pretty good. Once again, Rome pushes the world forward into an age of harmony. Achieve victory when 66% of the world's population follows my state religion. Really? Okay. Um, so by Age of Harmony, you mean Age of Crusades. That, that's basically what you mean. There's also no more secularism, so spreading my religion's very easy. Generate power to power modern buildings and improvements, and assemble an air force. In 1692? Man, we're doing great. So air units are a new thing I've never messed with before. So we can station these in a few places, and they have an extremely long range. They can intercept enemies, they can bomb things. Oh my goodness. And then power needs. That's a new thing we have to have, huh? Right. So I gotta find rare earth metals. I gotta find petroleum. Probably in the deserts, if I had to guess. And I'm gonna have to probably start deleting a whole load of improvements in order to make that work, which feels kinda bad, man. Well, I'm 38% of the way to winning the game right now. What are our other options, though? I need four out of eight techs in order to advance to the age of rocketry. Well, I feel like proselytizing is the sort of thing we would need. Create religious texts, get a lot of religion, that's all great. Spread your state religion to every region. Every region that I control, presumably. Unless you're telling me that with a ridiculous amount of art I can convert the entire world, that would be interesting. Religious diplomacy, gain an absolute ton of diplomatic experience. Uh-huh. I can ask another nation to very nicely embrace my religion. I never thought about that. We could have been demanding that people accept our faith instead. Ha! Huh. But this is a nice way to do it. And maybe through diplomacy, I can start going for the religious victory. Now that would be interesting, wouldn't it? As far as our weaponry, we can go for machine guns, we can get some biplanes, military bases, and so on. That's all great. New icons, uh-huh. So ways of getting some power and stuff, presumably, or at least needing power. Paper factories, woodworks... Well, if I don't have a way of making power, all of these are useless to me, so okay. Congregation? Lots of sanitation. Jesus, dude. Okay, the cemetery solves a few of my problems. 
Food bank. That's a lot of food. Wow. Feed the world indeed. Rare earth metals. Something we would need specialists for, which I'm still not really producing anywhere. There's the power station. Convert coal into energy. I don't have very much coal. I've got some, but I don't got a lot. The central power station would be good, though. Produce power only costs me education. I am very good at producing education. Yeah, almost all of these researches are useless to me unless I get applied science. That said, I'm going to go for religious diplomacy. If we can move to winning the freaking game, I think we should do it. Oh yeah, and was there an option to change my government? There's not. Wait a minute, I don't get a new government? I admit I'm vaguely disappointed. I was kind of hoping to get a new government. Alrighty, knowing that, we just go ahead and uh, probably just enjoy some cheaper expansion. I will pick up the legacy, right? We'll go ahead and do that. And then the translators just seem useless to me. I really don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. I guess I'll pick it up just in case. Maybe we can find four manuscripts somewhere. Promote miracles. So now there's an advantage to doing things like this because I really want mo Oh, there's too few population following heretical religion. What are you talking about? Oh, it doesn't get rid of the pagans. It just gets rid of the heretics? Well, what if I don't have any heretics? What if I'm just that popular? I mean, I have heretics. I've got one population of Jews. That's that's it. That's all I've got. Well, this is pointless. Hey, look, petroleum. What else do we find here? Rare earth metals. Oh, we've got a frick ton of them over here. Well, hello, but I don't have the right kind of mines. Dang it. Right, I'm starting to think that if I can't nicely convert some people to my religion, it's time to just start going to war. I can demand some religious conversions, and I'm strong enough that some people might say, yeah, we give up. I mean, even if they reject my demand, what happens? I get a justified war against them. Yeah. I think Japan might need to be one of the first to go. If that is the case, let's start moving my army up this way. It'll take a few turns. Oh, I am wrong, by the way. It looks like you can actually get some power just by entering the age, even without the advanced versions. So we can boost the region level here, and we can get six power. That's enough to power up at least a handful of upgrades. It's not bad. That said, I think I'd still rather work on some science. And we also really need some specialist production. I have not been messing with that at all. You know, my social fabric says I am a shockingly tolerant society, which gets me money, which feels a little bit unusual, but it's okay. I'm, I'm, I got so much money, I don't even know what to do with it, if I'm honest. Like, we're, we've, hit that, we've hit the critical mass of the game, all right? Let's be honest. We've hit critical mass. I don't think there's a dang thing the AI can do to really challenge me, except for everyone gang up on me into a really big war. I think that's the one thing that could theoretically screw me up. I'm gonna go ahead and spend some money to rush out the Academy of Science, just be done with that, and let's start trading up some new units, because we're pretty sure we're gonna want that. Some Cuirassiers, some Dragoons, Scorpion Boats? These are kind of fun. What the heck are these things? I don't even know. I do feel like I need to give Japan one chance to just go with the flow, though. It does feel like the right thing to do. So in Kyoto, I would like to request very nicely that you adopt religion. Actually, they don't like me very much. Settlement's too close. Religious differences. This would be solved if you just convert. Okay, so if I request it nicely and they say no, it reduces opinion. If I demand and they say no, I get a war goal. I think I've got to do the demand, actually. I, I wanted to be nice, but I think I'm going to demand it. Message sent. We'll find out what they say. Japan accepts a religious conversion. Okay, so my opinion goes up. They dislike me. Ah, I'm not about that. That's totally fine. So you've now converted to my religion. I don't know why this is actually worse. I would have thought that getting rid of the religious differences would make things better. Uh, maybe this has to reset or something. I don't know. But okay, so in theory, then, you've converted to my religion. So given time, we should be okay. If that's the case, I now need to turn my army back around and head toward the Aztecs, and we're going to have to do the exact same thing. New innovation, missionaries, all regions get faith. Nice. Japan wants an alliance. Okay, see, now, in order to protect you, I would th consider this, but... I still need Greece to eventually convert. But if I had you on my side, it might be easier to convert. All right, I'm gonna accept this for once. We are now finally allied to Japan, and we will use that to project our power. We are creating a new coalition. 
You know, I feel like maybe we can go ahead and make the demand of the Aztecs now. I'm gonna do that. Demand your religious subjugation. I am significantly stronger than you are. You will submit to the cult of Provis. Comes at a fun time, actually. The Zulu and the Aztecs are at war. That means the Aztecs are distracted, and hopefully the AI is smart enough to look at something like that and say, Ah, okay. Yeah, we don't wanna we don't wanna get into a second war here, especially with the much stronger neighbor. So I've got leverage. Let's see if they go through with it. They do! Ha 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 ha! Alright, so all of my bordering nations have now been very forcibly converted. Yes. Realistically, how quickly will they begin to convert? I have absolutely no idea. It might be such a slow process that it's totally not worth it. I'm not sure. I think for my next round of buildings, I am going to go for congregation, because I actually am having sanitation issues, and I hate, absolutely hate, having to waste some of my precious tiles on going for those upgrades. So a building that takes care of me for the foreseeable future is great, because like Mediolanum's having trouble, for example. And you know what? I was actually about to end the video, but tell you what, let's, let's try something, all right? I want to know if I can win the game in this age. I'm willing to bet that this is only an active victory condition during the Age of Harmony. If I can get to 66%, two-thirds of the world adopted into the Cult of Provis, we would win the game. Now, assuming I'm able to do that, don't worry. I'll make this like kind of a mark in the video right here. We'll be able to have kind of an alternate history. I will pick this back up in the next video and we'll still explore some of the later ages because I'm sure you guys want to see that. I know that I do. So you're not going to miss anything if I win the game right now, but I just want to know, is this something we can do right now by very, very aggressively demanding everyone except my religion? So, hi, Zulu. I demand religious convert- Oh, I don't have 10 diplomacy XP. Never mind, we wait to turn. I mean, here's my thought, right? Like, I've got a lot of military power about now, right? You take a look at the Zulu or something like that, they've got 1,200 power, I've got 3,000 since I've invested in muskets, and they have not. What about Persia? I'm pretty strong compared to them. What about Greece? They're the only ones in the game stronger than me. So they would resist me, and they have a religion of their own. So I probably couldn't forcibly convert Greece. But if I could get everyone else on my side and declare a grand crusade against Greece, maybe we can force the issue. Persia wants an alliance. Bad timing. Because I think they're at war with the Zulu, so if I do this, I'm pretty sure I can't really do anything as far as demanding anything of them, because we allies. Also... Can't demand anything from the Zulu because we'll be at war. I'm gonna have to reject the proposal even though I'm pretty sure this reduces our relations by a bit. So that could be a small problem. But Zulu, I demand your religious conversion. Also, didn't I have any envoys with Persia? I never got a single envoy over there. Good lord, we need to fix that. The reason I suspect this is going to work is because I really don't know how much the difference in power between nations is going to impact their diplomatic decisions, right? They're still in the Age of Discovery, they got four regions, they are less than half my power. A big scary Rome says convert, and they don't even have a religion yet by the way, so it's not like it's even a big deal. Why would they say no, right? Whereas Greece, I fully expect they would reject me, unless I get a lot stronger than them. Maybe, just maybe, if I do nothing but focus on building lots of military units, and get my power way up there, maybe we can just make the entire world cower. That's purely a hypothesis, by the way. I have no idea if it's going to work, but it would be very funny if it does. Japan has canceled our alliance. The Zulu do accept our religion. Okay. I didn't really need Japan's uh, help or anything, so that's not a huge deal. I'm a little confused. They've converted again. Excuse me? No, I demand your religious conversion. This honestly may not work. I really have no idea. Maybe we need to spend a lot more points to kind of force these guys to convert first and then demand it, otherwise they'll keep flipping. That could very well be. I have no idea. I mean, if what it means is I have to go through here and actually just, like, conquer another city or two and then force their conversion, I can do that. I mean, imagine taking Nagoya over here, right, then using one of my culture abilities to promote miracles and instantly convert 21 more pops. It'll be less than that, but you get the idea. That would be one way to force this. So, Crusade alone in Japan and Greece would probably be all that I need. And Japan accepts a religious conversion once more. Okay, it's very confusing. Now the Zulu won an alliance. No. 
The Aztecs won an alliance. Oh, good lord. Um, yeah, I, I don't know who you're at war with. I really need an update to the UI here where it actually can show me some information or let me just kind of back out of this and take a look first. Because I'm going to have to reject the proposal because I really don't feel like getting involved in someone else's wars. Well, we absolutely need to pick up the proselytize tech next. Because then we can go for a special arts power to spread our religion to every region. And when they say spread to every region, I assume they don't just mean mine. I assume they mean every single one of the game. So if I am generating ridiculous amounts of art XP, and I am getting 43.6 per turn, oh my god, uh, maybe we can in fact do that. I'm finally able to get my envoy over here to Persia, by the way, which means now... I can demand your religious conversion. They don't dislike me. And again, they have no religion of their own. Why would they ever say no? This is a very advantageous uh, opportunity for them, right? Yeah, of course it is. Heck, to make it easier, I'll even go here and spread my religion in your capital. And boom, just like that, we got ourselves... How many extra followers in the largest city in the game? Ten, there we go. One full third of the population, just like that. Thank you. They accepted. Okay, if I am not much mistaken, um, that means everyone but Greece is following my religion, technically. Yes, Rome, Japan, Zulu, Persia, Aztecs, all proper cultists. It's just silly Greece with their Hinduism that refuses. And they're still technically stronger than me. They are, they are pulling out all the military units. These guys are legitimately a threat. Let's go ahead and get a Eureka, try to rush out the proselytize. That is now done. Okay, so we could do some additional stuff here, modern militaries and so on, that's all great. I'd like to get some better cannons and stuff. We could pump back over to... Where do I have cannons, actually? That's a great question. Where the frick are these things? Maybe it's Automechanica, the giant crossbows. I think it is, actually. Right, it's only gonna take one turn, just in case I need to go to war with Greece. Alright, just in case. Now, proselytizing. What is involved in the proselytizing? Oh, drat. It's not a thing that's actually going to take art XP. Is it a culture thing? Freaking is. All right, it's an arts culture power. So the more culture I can produce right now, the more I can do this. Gain 30 Cult of Provis in Texcoco? Spreads your state religion to every region, applies increased belief in your state religion on regional capital targets. So why Texcoco, though? Why over here? Why is this a thing? I, 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 I'm unclear from the verbiage still as to whether this affects everyone or just a region of my choice, which would be nowhere near as exciting. That said, I mean, we're at 47% progress now, so I am slowly making progress here. It's happening. It's happening. I mean, over here in Japan, they've abandoned Judaism for the most part. I'm starting to see this pop up. Okay, Cult of Prophecy is going fast. At this point, how much would it hurt if I just went to Greece and said, screw it, I could demand your religious conversion? They're gonna say no. They actually want an alliance instead. That's hilarious. Nope. Oh, here's something I didn't even know. Oh, the reason we weren't getting anything from City of Gold is because I'd have to get a museum special improvement from Noble Courts. I didn't even read that in Age of Discovery. It's amazing what things you learn if you just read. Let's go ahead and rush some culture and let's find out what religious ceremony is really going to do. Increase my state religion in every region. Boom. So do we see in some places... Okay. Yes, it looks like it may have maybe brought one population into the fold? Like, what about in Greek territory far away? Yeah, okay. There is a small percentage of the population that has adopted the Cult of Provis. Not much, mind you. Not much at all. But every little bit like that can eventually start to add up. And that's kind of important because I can't really afford to keep spreading religion here like this very much. It's just going to cost way too much art XP. There's going to come a point where it goes above 300 and then what the heck am I supposed to do, right? abso freaking lootly nothing. Another innovation, Crusaders? Oh, that seems appropriate. Hold on. Every time we win a battle, seven targets, I assume that means seven cities, get more of my religion. Oh, we need to go to war. We need to go to war badly. I'm going to demand the religious conversion of Greece. They're going to reject it. I'm positive. They accepted. You're kidding me. <laughs> Hold on. Greece accepted? Wait, wait, wait. That wasn't supposed to happen. No, wait. Every player has accepted the cult of Provis. Hey, now. Hey. All right. Well, now we're 55% of the way toward winning. 
I mean, I hate to be mean, but I don't think it's going to save you because at the end of the day, um, I still really need to convert your people more than anyone else. In fact, even if I don't convert them just by killing your people, the percentage of the world that doesn't follow my religion goes down, so I win. As long as no one else is actively researching the next age. That's the real kicker. I also get to upgrade a bunch of my units. Never mind, I'm out of warfare experience. Okay. Get some better units. We get some mounted machine guns. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not even a contest anymore. Right. Hi, Grease. Um, oh, boy. I have to wait three turns before I can do anything to them. I honestly did not expect that to work. Not even a little bit. I'm going to convert a lot of my internal trade routes and imports to anything that gives me culture. I'm trying to rush this as much as possible. Because the more I do this, presumably, the better. Yeah, like the Cult of Provis is going up slightly in a few places, even places where it really shouldn't have any pressure at all. So I do think it very slightly is going to impact every region of the world. 62% of the way there. No sign of anyone else getting into the next age yet. Oh gosh, you might do it. I'm, I think I'm this far ahead of everybody when it comes to science. <laughs> It is unfortunately taking me way too long to reposition my armies so that I can go and harass some people. Like, it takes a lot of time to move your armies, even with all these roads. That doesn't feel right. I've got my first plane, though. Apparently this thing is able to redeploy in many different areas. Well, that's nice. Let's go to Delhi. Honestly, we're at 64% progress. I may not have to declare a war. It really might just be going up this fast now that everyone has my religious pressure. 65%? Rush the culture, dude. Rush the culture. One more big religious ceremony, dang it. Was it enough to get to 66%? No, we're just slightly shy, dang it. One more big conversion. Let's try that. Spread religion one time over here in Toluca, which gets me a few more followers. Come on, we're this close. Just convert! I'm gonna cancel my open borders with Greece. We can declare hostilities. I actually should have done that a while ago. I'm a fool. I am literally 0.38% off from winning the game. 0.38% dang you! It's fine. This turn I am quite certain I've got it. Rush the culture, another religious ceremony. And that's the win! Ho ho, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> I have won my first game of millennia by converting the entirety of the world, or at least all the world leaders and two thirds of the population, to my cult, the cult of Bravis reigns supreme. And that is just fitting. Wow, okay. Um, good news, we were so far ahead in science, no one even had a chance of getting to the age of rocketry before I was able to pull that off. Absolutely phenomenal. Don't worry though, I know you guys would like to see more of what the advanced ages are going to look like, so I tell you what, we are going to do another video of Millennia. Unsponsored, just a thing I want to do because I want to explore the game, and I'm going to pick an earlier save point, alright, we're not going to go for the massive religious victory, instead, we're going to pursue the Age of Rocketry, and we're going to find out what happens in the future versions of the game. Ages, I am sure, you've never seen before. Once again, a big thank you to Paradox for sponsoring this video. I'm quite happy with how I was able to end things. Of course, if you guys would like to learn more, there will be a link in the description down below. Be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.